block, which is in, we put it in Seresu or whatever, but it's one of these things from uh, Baguazhang, which is a, a Chinese one, right? Um, so in the Seresu stuff, we basically hold hold the sword in different spots and walk around in a circle like this, right? And there's a tutorial on it. But the, the purpose of this is not, of course, to, <laughs> to just, just walk around your opponent or whatever. But really what, is, what, is, it, what it enables you to do is to kind of go past your opponent without really opening up your center line. I'll show you what you mean. If I, so conventionally, like in, in the Makashi at Makashi level or whatever, when we start going in a circle, we'll kind of cross back like this, so we stay here like that. That, of course, is slow and a little bit, I mean, we can see what each other's are doing and everything like that. So, this is a strategy which helps that. You're going around the circle, you actually move your hips into the circle, but you keep this on here. So, if you're, if you're shuffling behind, you do the, the, the other one. Okay, so as we're going like this, you see, and you can see it, it gets, I can here and then I can switch very quickly like that. And I can keep my weapon here, so I can get my legs to move in one direction while I have the kind of freedom with my upper body, you know, there. Um, so, one way we, we like to work on it here is this way. Um, if we touch here in the middle, we're going to imagine a circle that's going here. The line goes between our feet. Now, my teacher said, emphasize, especially starting out, it's like you're carrying an egg between your knees. So your knees do not go that far apart. Okay. The other thing is, is that you want to shuffle through your feet like this, very close to them, you know? So you're not, you're not stepping way out like that, okay? So the full circle walk being here, I step out like that, and I keep my weight on my back foot, okay? I shift forward, and then I throw this foot forward here, but there's no weight on it yet. Okay, so put all the weight into the back foot there, and then there. So Sinking down low is going to help you keep the weight centered on one foot, right? Keeping the weight centered on one foot is going to help you walk more surely, quicker, because you'll, you're really going to get sensitive in shifting weight like that. Now, so that's the lower body, okay? Always keep the knees going the same direction as the toes. That's another reason you keep the knees nice and nice and close together. You just don't want to get into this where you're kind of taking monster steps, right? There are other things where you can do what's called a mudsliding step, where I go like that, but, and I, I'll show you that here in a minute, but we'll, we'll just go here. So yeah, now, the important thing is that you don't actually cross your foot past your other one. So that's why you want to have them kind of slide past each other. Right, there you go. Good. You see? And that will kind of keep them on the, on the right line. Now the inside foot, if you want, can actually point more in towards the circle, to the center of the circle. And that can often help you do smaller, tighter circles. Right? So, as I'm going here, if I want to do a really tight circle, I can go just like this, okay? Now, of course, there's not a huge amount of direct application for doing that. But it does train really good motor uh, mechanics and stuff like that. Um, so that you're not going to get tangled up if you get into that position. Somebody starts pushing you up into yourself and your feet are close together. They're kind of used to it. Right. So this is another 
kind of another uh, strategy, and you can see why using this strategy you want those. Now, the other, the, the relationship is the longer the step, the lower you go. So if I want to take really, really long steps, I have to get down really low. Okay. <clears throat> right. Now, <laughs> so this is just this is just how to perform this step. Once you start getting it good, you have to learn how to make a steady circle, one that stays the same size. Right? It doesn't contract and expand. Right. And you'll notice that, it, like, if, especially at first, you'll tend to spiral in, kind of toward the center. Now, with the upper body, what you're going to do, and this is easy with two people, right, is when I'm here in the circle walk and I'm here like this, we are going to touch blades. We're not going to push. We're not going to do anything like that. We're just going to stay connected here and try to, see, have our blades on our center lines, and we keep them there, right? And so then we walk, right? And so the first... The first level of this, right? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now turn your upper body more towards me. See, so you're twisted. Okay, there you go. Okay. Right. It's hard. <laughs> okay. Now it's even more difficult without a person because you don't have a, a, a common center, but you can take your saber or whatever, and use that as your as your center. Um, now, of course, I'm doing this barehanded, but you can also do it with a sword. Anything in the center that's going to allow you to figure out these types of motions here that, that allow you to kind of circle one target in various ways. Um, in the Seresu part of it, we're only concerned about how that relates to this. And one of the big things is, is this turning of the waist. It's going to replicate being like this. Because if I'm like this, right, and you're, and we're, tucked, we're in here like this, okay, and I'm here like this with my shoulder pointing towards you, if you step over here, to go for this side and cut me off as we're going through here with this. When I go this way, go ahead, as you go here, I don't have enough time to get over here to do anything about this strike, right? Because I'm essentially faced this way and my weapon is over here, okay? So what I want to do is be in here like this so that when you come over to this side, I just continue walking around, hoping that I'm going to get an opening over here that I can also exploit. Okay. When you're walking the circle with the with the blade, those are the kind of dynamics that are going through your mind, and you're so you're just like this. Yeah, there you go. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Good. See. Now, what we can do is we can change. So we're going to do a hook step here. We're going to step across first. Good. Now, we're going to hook our foot in here, so our knees are kind of pointing towards each other, so are our feet, okay? And then we open up this way, like that, and now we're going this way, okay? You have to reset your center towards me. There you go, good. All right. <laughs> this, is the, <laughs> this is the hard part of this particular exercise, is you will notice that you're, you, you will tend to, as you're walking, you will tend to open up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, we're keeping it here. You really want to feel a good twist here up at the um, rib cage area, waist area, that kind of thing. <clears throat> right. Now, there's a bunch of different ways, as I said, you can practice this step. First of all, get some sort of center, anything will work, you know coffee can, anything, you just put, put something in the center so that you have a center, you can just mark something on there. And <clears throat> either with your hands, if you do it with your hands, what you want to do is you want to have this one outstretched and you want this one below your elbow, okay? 
That will help prevent this, where you're opening up too much, and then that becomes a problem. So if I'm here like this, I stay on this, and I just move here, trying to stay equidistant from it. All right, maybe I should turn it on. People can see it. Okay, <clears throat> so here, I'm trying to stay pretty equidistant from it. Okay, it gives me something there. Now, when I turn, I don't ever want to leave that line open, right? So as I'm walking around, no matter which place I go, I'm going to turn there. Okay. So that's one way you can do it just with hands. If you're doing it with just with hands, when you come in here, this foot hooks in, and then this hand kind of comes down like this. When you open up, you're going to step through. When that foot goes into position, this hand comes out on top, and this one is at the bottom. And again, you have that dynamic hips going one way and hands going the other. Right? The closer you are to it, the tighter the circle. The further away you are from it, the more work you're going to do. Right? So it's generally advisable to start kind of far away from your intended target so you can get a lot of steps in. Now, as I said, you want to try to focus your weight on the back foot. Right? Like there. So that my front foot is always kind of out in front of me. Um, somebody I used to practice with like it to sitting on an office chair and wheeling around. Right? So you're seated, but you're walking. Now, there's a step, which is a training step to help you get that. It's called the mud step. And what you do is you do the same circle walk, but you keep the foot kind of flat to the ground and you slide it just over the top of the top of the ground like this. You see? So that when I go here, I'm kind of shuffling through there like sliding the mud. Now what that does is if I put any weight on my front foot, it will stop. Right? So if I'm going here and I'm right now I'm not and I end up doing that, I know put more weight onto the back. You see? So like that. Okay. Now this one's much more difficult to keep the knees in check, but it does help you keep your uh, your uh, weight in check. Yep, there you go. Right. Good. Yep. Now, right, so now we turn. So there you go. Hook around. There you go. Yep. Boom. Yes. Good. You see. So when you turn, you end up facing facing the center, right? There. So now you lock that center in. Move just your lower body. There you go, and then step through. There. Okay. Yes. Good. Now, right. Yep. Good. So it takes practice, right? <laughs> Believe me, I I would do this. I would do this for an hour, just circle walking before before we would do anything. So <clears throat> it's a practice which can be meditative as well. <laughs> you're like, oh. right. And it can be it can be challenging, right? I mean depending on how fast you're walking, how low you're going, it can be really <laughs> really challenging. Now a place where it's really good as far as use goes, especially when we're holding these these things, is when we get into binds. Right? Because if we come in here and we get into a bind like this, and let's say we hold it nice and, nice and tight here like this, now when I start walking around, there, yeah, see? You can hold that bind really nice and tight. Now keep the bind there, let's turn. There, good. You see? 
Same thing up here. If I come up to here like this, and you've got me bound up here, go, uh, put your tip down here like this. Now, walk around it, you see? And now I'm forced into stuff like that, okay? So it's, a, it's an interesting little technique or strategy to use, you know, in that kind of uh, uh, situation. It's just good for footwork. It gives you, you know, good body mechanics so that you can get around to different sides, um, especially if somebody is favoring attacking on one side, right? Just arc around that same side, we'll throw them for a loop, <laughs> as you probably well know. Um, okay, so. One of the reasons I found out that like monks wear the socks that come up to here and swordsmen wear the boots that come up to the knee is because when you're wearing loose clothing, you can step right in there and boom and catch catch on your own pants. So there is a there is definitely a a reason to wear boots like that when you're doing this stuff or tie up. Tie up yeah. Yeah, gators or shoot, just take like some uh, tennis racket. Yeah, so the, uh, the Vikings had a very particular name for the strap that they would they wore like gators. It was just a piece mm -hmm. of woven wool they wrap around. Like they had a name. Right.